I would like to introduce this rather fun little project. It's a magneto hydrodynamic boat, so naturally it's going to include a range of different and interesting topics such as magnets, boat propulsion. I'm also going to throw in a bit of electrochemistry and hull design. What I'm busy building here is a small prototype with which I want to demonstrate a slightly unusual configuration with external flow. In other words, the electrodes are flush with the hull and there is no duct in which the water flows. This project is already quite a step up from similar countertop demonstrations because a, I'm actually paying some attention to designing a proper hull shape for this and as you'll see when I test it, it moves exceptionally well on very low voltage and limited power. This is what we end up with after two coats of floor sealer and a lick of paint. Magnet goes there. It stands proud of the bottom by half its thickness and I'll explain why that is a little bit later. One cell 18650 lithium battery and I can move that to get exactly the right trim. Right, off to get some electrodes. Well that's all sorted. The magnet is fed in. I gave it an extra coating of paint and Electrodes insulated where I don't want the current to escape into the water. Battery in place, time for testing. Well, it was all over the place, so I also had to add a tiny little rudder. Now it's going nice and straight. It's drawing half an amp at 4.2 volts. That gives us 2.1 watt. 3, 2, 1, go. That was a nice run. Now just for the sake of consistency, I'm also going to run it a couple of times in the opposite direction. Oh, where are you going? See, that's exactly why you need to do runs in multiple directions. There's probably a piece of iron that affects it in one direction and not the other so we need to eliminate that and retest right well problem solved i found a large chunk of steel not too far away removed it three two one go much better i think i need to readjust that rudder. I repeated these tests going in both directions and got very consistent results. The black markings under the water are spaced 25 millimeters apart so roughly one inch and by analyzing the video footage afterwards I was able to calculate speed and acceleration of each run. These are the results averaged over 11 runs. You can see that it starts to stabilize at 50 millimeters per second, still carrying a small amount of acceleration. So to really get the full potential of this hull, I need a larger test bath. Now to better understand the peculiarities of this design, let me first compare it side by side with a conventional magnetohydrodynamic ducted drive. Normally you would have two magnets, your magnetic flux would be very uniform spread between the two magnets. That assumes that you have some sort of iron bridge to give your flux a return path. In the external flow configuration the flux is not constrained but it's also not quite as dense as in the ducted version. It's free to find its own return path through the water and through the hull. What is immediately evident 
is that the flux influences a much larger portion of water whereas the flux in the ducted version is constrained to the water flow inside the duct. To generate the force, current needs to pass from one electrode to the other and it needs to cut the magnetic field lines at 90 degrees. Once again with a ducted version the lines are uniform and all of the lines cut the magnetic field lines at 90 degrees. In this instance the electric current is going to cross over the magnet towards the other electrode. Now I don't know the exact shape and distribution of this electric field, the current paths, but I think it is safe to say that the strongest current flows between the two points closest to each other and follows the shortest path through the water right up against the magnet face. Whatever current flows further away, the longer path through the water means higher resistance and for a given voltage that would mean a reduced current. However, I'm pretty sure that we do have current flowing rather far from the magnet purely from observation. I tested the setup for current flow in a shallow tub, say about a centimeter or two deep in salt water, and the current was about half of that compared to the current through deeper water. There is definitely additional current flowing through the deeper parts of the water. Now to generate a specific amount of propulsive force, a certain mass of water has to be sucked in. That flow gets accelerated as it leaves the back of the duct and Newton's second law gives us thrust. In this external flow configuration, the electromagnetic force acts on a much larger piece of water, a larger mass. So to generate the same amount of thrust, it only needs to impart a very small amount of acceleration to that mass. This increase in velocity in the wake represents energy that you can never recover. So the less energy you impart to the wake, the better the efficiency will be. So this external flow configuration definitely has an advantage as far as efficiency is concerned. You can always increase the section area of that duct, but that has secondary implications, namely surface area. And that's the next major difference between these two configurations. Magnetohydrodynamic drives are generally very inefficient, which means that these boats typically operate in extremely low speed to length ratios. And at those ratios, the predominant form of drag is friction drag. Wave drag almost doesn't feature. So to reduce friction drag, the only real way to do that is to reduce wetted surface area. So if we consider the surface area of this particular magnet, that width and those two shoulders, that would be equivalent to that length there and these sides. So the ducted version still has one, two, three, four, five, six. All that extra surface area simply adds friction drag. Now another form of drag that is often overlooked, especially when you have sharp inside corners, is interference drag. Interference drag is a specific drag associated with the boundary layer of two faces where they intersect. This configuration has two inside corners, whereas this one has the same two, and then also four additional corners at very high velocity. So that's additional interference drag. I did a flow simulation on a very basic hull shape and uh, if these arrows represent the typical pressure along the hull surface as it is in motion obviously they won't all be exactly the same size but if you accelerate water around this midships area what you end up with is a slightly higher pressure towards the rear of the hull and a slight reduction of pressure 
towards the front. It's pretty easy to visualize that if this was a propeller. You have a high pressure behind the propeller and a low pressure sucking the water in. The implication of that is rather interesting. All that extra pressure also acts on the hull and this reduction in pressure means that the water pressure against the hull is also reduced. So you end up with a net force acting forward the hull shape and the pressure distribution now becomes part of the overall propulsive device. To understand why I did not mount the magnets flush with the surface like I did with the electrodes, it's necessary to look at the finer details of the magnetic flux lines. A magnet that is relatively thin in the direction of its magnetization would have a much higher density of flux lines around the edges, specifically around the corners. But if you look right up close at the corner, obviously this line finds its way back this line finds its way back to the other side. If you zoom right into the corner, you actually have flux lines leaving the side and entering that side shy of the corner. The density at these corners is the highest along the entire surface of the magnet. So by trying to get as much current to flow around those corners, I made sure that the magnet sits out into the water and I also made sure that my electrode gets as close to the magnet as possible forcing current right up against the magnet face and around that corner. The fact that it sits in the water also means that there's no gap between the current flowing along the surface even along this face the flux at the surface is much, much stronger than it is further away. Now extending these electrodes further out to the side might look like a very dumb idea because you have current flowing in this direction and you have flux lines cutting it in the wrong direction. So in this area you actually have a force pushing in the opposite direction than you want for thrust. However, the magnetic flux over there is a lot less than it is over here. So the same current that flows through that part still flows through this part and generates thrust. And it generates more thrust here than it does produce drag over there. This is only really necessary if your voltage is limited. The only way to add more current to the water at a fixed voltage is to increase the size of your electrode. At a higher voltage you can push the same amount of current through the water and get away with a smaller electrode. So to really optimize this configuration what you want is some sort of steel bridge, iron bridge that will modify the flux lines passing through the water. So instead of cutting through this area to reach the other side of the magnet, you'll find that the flux lines tend to find the path of least resistance, which is through the iron. You can now create an electrode that sits with its face parallel to the flux lines and any current that escapes from that face has to cut the flux lines in such a way that it creates thrust. Right now at the beginning of the video I said that I'm also going to mix in some electrochemistry and what I meant was this. You have two electrodes immersed in an electrolyte so immediately that gives you the option of creating a galvanic cell. The only thing that you need is to change one of these electrodes to a metal with a different electric potential. If we leave this electrode as let's say copper and we change this electrode 
to aluminium this effectively creates a cell that shorts out the lithium battery driving the circuit so aluminium and copper gives you a potential difference of 0.7 volt add that to the 3.7 volts that you that you get from your lithium battery and what you have is current that is proportional to a battery of 4.4 volts driving the circuit so you end up with higher power without any additional weight so where to from here well I found a research paper online an academic paper by some clever people who designed a catamaran specifically for testing small models of magnetohydrodynamic boats and they suspended a ducted drive between the two hulls they went into the theory and really characterized the system down to the last little analytical detail and did some tests in various uh, concentrations of salinity so I'm going to take their results and see if I can better that they tested in a fairly large tank so they were able to reach terminal velocity for each run I don't have a large tank so I'm going to have to do it in the river so I found myself a few nice chunky magnets as well as a donor boat this hull is unfortunately completely the opposite of what you want for a low power low speed propulsion system I will strip this of its electronics and repurpose what I can to build myself a fully remote control magneto-hydrodynamic boat so stay tuned for part two